As you can tell, I'm in my classroom right now. It's empty. It's really early in the morning. But what I have for you today is a lesson about warm things, hot things, things that could burn you if you are not careful. If you look down in the description, there is a study guide with all of the words and some simple definitions for you just to help you learn English a little better. Hope you like it. Hey, welcome. Hope you're ready to learn some English. My name is Brent. This is Speak English with this guy. And today we are going to be learning about hot things. I didn't realize how many things could be described as hot in English until I started designing this lesson. We have our first term we can talk about. And that first term is warm. And you might be wondering, what does warm mean? I'm going to change the background so it looks a little bit more warm. Orange and red are colors that might be, might be warm. If you ever hear warm in English, think of this. Warm is in between cold and hot, but it's definitely closer to hot. Warm, it's usually comfortable. Warm is usually a good thing. For example, you can warm yourself next to a fire. Yes, warm can be a verb. It can be something you do. How about this? Warm is almost, almost always good. It's snowing where I live right now. And if you look at that family near the fire, a word in English to describe that picture is cozy. They don't seem too hot. They seem comfortable. The mom is smiling. Got a Christmas tree in the background. That looks really cozy. But there is one time a parent might not like for their child to be warm. And that is when we talk about a fever. So a fever happens when you are sick and your body gets a little too warm. So if you look down at the bottom, I have a couple sentences. Feel free to practice your shadowing, practice your pronunciation as I read it. I think I will do a pretty good job reading, seeing English is my first language. Wish me luck. A parent might say to a child, you feel warm if they think they are sick and have a fever. And if you look at that thing in the picture, and if you're listening on the podcast, I'm sorry you can't see it. But if you think you might be sick and you have a fever, you can use something called a thermometer. That's how you pronounce that. Thermometer. Thermometer. And in that word, there is a word part, therm. We are going to talk about that in a minute. But here is the sentence. A thermometer takes a person's temperature to see if they are running a fever. So a parent might say, ooh, you feel warm, meaning you might have a fever. You might be getting sick. And just know, anytime in English you see therm, T-H-E-R-M, and you don't know that word, think it might have something to do with heat. Because in English, we get a lot of our words from the Latin and Greek languages. We just finished with fever, and look at that. We now have toasty. I think most people like to be toasty. When I hear the word toasty, I do think of sitting next to a fire. You are nice and warm in a good way. Toasty is another way to say warm. Yeah, it's always good. I can't think of a way when you would use toasty in a bad way. Oh, yeah, even if it was too hot in the room, you wouldn't say it's toasty in here. I think most people would think of toasty as being good, but something so different is toast. 
it's not really the same. Just in case you didn't notice, there is a picture of toast. And I have a sentence for you. Some Americans enjoy having toast in the morning for breakfast. Toast can be a noun. In that picture, there is a piece of toast. Now, to turn that bread into toast, you toast it. So toast can actually be a verb, something you do. And it can be an adjective. Just add an, a Y and it will describe those nouns. Toasty. I feel toasty. But you wouldn't say your toast is toasty. That just doesn't make sense. Oven. That can be hot. An oven can be hot. And when I was younger, I confused the words oven and stove. So in the next two slides, we will talk about how oven and stove are different. So an oven is a good place to bake a cake. If you are watching here on YouTube, you can see a picture of an oven. So think of a cake, think of the way you would make that cake, the way you would warm that cake up, the way you would bake that cake, you would bake it in an oven. But if you needed to boil water, you wouldn't stick it in an oven. English phrasal verb. No, you would use a stove or you might hear stove top. So to boil water, we'll talk about what boiling is in a minute. You would use a stove or a stove top. And the stove in that picture has five burners. That's what we call the place where you would put your pot to warm it up or to heat it up. A couple English phrasal verbs there. So five burners. Two on the left side, one in the middle, and two on the right side. Boiling water. When water or any kind of liquid is boiling, it is really hot and has bubbles and steam. So there is a pitcher of some boiling water. And guess what? Boiling water is definitely, definitely hot. Steam. So boiling water will have steam coming off it. And steam and smoke looks, looks very close. All right? So steamy is the adjective we might use. If something is steaming, that's the verb. But if something is hot and you want to find another way to say it's hot, you could say it's steamy. Another thing that could be steamy is the room after you take a shower. If you take a shower with warm water, we don't want that water to be hot you might steam up the room. You might put a lot of steam in the room after you take your shower. But you might describe a hot day as steamy. Another way to describe a hot day is steamy. Today was not a steamy day. It actually snowed where I live. But look at this picture here. You have a cup of coffee at least that's what it looks like to me. It could be tea. That cup of coffee is steaming. I mean, you can tell it's hot. Steam and smoke look almost the same. Smoke might be a little more gray. Steam might be a little more white. But they both look very similar. They look almost the same. And you see that picture? over there on the right. That is an iron. Let's talk about pronouncing that word, iron. That iron is also steaming. And if you look at the screen, I have it written out for you. Like I, me, I or I earn. 
So like money, hopefully if you have a job, you earn money. So if you can say earn and you can say, I, you can say iron. It's a hard word. Even native English speakers have trouble saying iron, but you can iron your clothes with an iron. Oh goodness. I just said another word that's hard to pronounce for English learners. Clothes. Not easy for native English speakers either. Clothes. It's almost like a Z sound at the end. Now we're going to talk about how food can be hot in two different ways. So if your food is hot because of the temperature, maybe it just came out of the oven, you might want to blow on your food to cool it off. And there is a, another English phrasal verb for you. If your food is hot, you could blow on your food to cool it off. If your food comes straight out of the oven and you try to eat it, there's a good chance you are going to burn your mouth. One of the things that was hard to learn for me when I was a kid was waiting for my pizza to cool off. I love pizza. Still to this day, I love pizza. But when the pizza was ready, it usually came straight from the oven and I would try to eat it and I always burned my mouth. I never waited for that pizza to cool off. So the cheese would stick to the top of my mouth. We also call that the roof of your mouth. Pizza is one of those foods you want to wait a little while. You want to blow on your pizza before you eat it because it's usually really hot when it comes straight out of the oven. We've got something else though. Spicy food. This is food that is made with peppers. So your food might have come out of the oven an hour ago. But if it's spicy, it's still going to be hot in a different way. It might burn your mouth in a different way. And there are some cultures around the world that really like spicy food. So my question for you is right here. Please let us know in the chat. Do you like spicy food? Do you like spicy food? And I would love to read your answers. This will give you a chance to practice your writing. You might say, I like spicy food. Spicy food like? And then you can give us an example of the food you like. I will go first. I like mildly spicy food. I like mildly spicy food. Food that's not too spicy. It still has flavor, but it has a little kick. We might use that term if food is just a little spicy. It has a little kick. So I do like a little spice in my food sometimes, not all the time. Hot sauce. So if you do like spicy food, you might want to put hot sauce on a lot of your food. I like putting hot sauce, excuse me, on my chicken. I like putting hot sauce on my eggs even. Hot sauce on eggs. It's, it's pretty good. I bet a lot of people like it too. But if you have really spicy food, fiery is another way you could describe that food. If something is really hot, you could call it fiery. Really, really hot though. Really, really hot. We also use fiery in a couple different ways. Earlier in the lesson, I said the colors of orange and red are like fire. The adjective you can use is fiery. So how about this sentence here? In the spring, the flowers bloom with nice fiery reds and oranges. I will read that one more time. If you want to practice your shadowing, I think it's a tough sentence. In the spring, the flowers bloom with nice 
fiery reds and oranges. Practice saying that. If you want to pause, practice saying that. It's a good way to practice your speaking. You're not speaking to anybody, but you can practice it. You can also record yourself and listen to it. How about this? This one is not so nice. The plane landed in a fiery crash. And if you look at the picture, that looks like it might be a fiery crash. We might also use it if somebody gets angry. She had a fiery temper. She got mad over the smallest things. Smallest things. I got hot at her because she wouldn't stop texting me. You, when you are angry, you can use hot. I got hot. That means you got angry. Probably everybody knows this, right? A volcano. A volcano. Here is my definition in English. Remember, I am not a science teacher. This is for everyone listening on the podcast because you can't see this picture. If you see this picture, you know what a volcano is. You probably know it in your language. But for anyone just listening, a volcano is a mountain that has an opening and inside is lava. Well, what's lava? That's lava. Lava is the stuff inside the volcano. And I wanted to teach you this verb. Sometimes lava can spew from the volcano. So if you look at that picture we just had, it looks like lava is spewing from the volcano. Did you know that word spew before? I thought this might be the one word that nobody knows, that I could teach everybody something today. Spew. It is a verb. It's a great verb to know in English. Spew. So lava can spew from the volcano. So anything that is pushed out really quickly, really rapidly, could be called spew. So spew means to push out with great force. And if you look at that picture, there's definitely a volcano in the picture, but there's also a person covering their mouth because they might spew. Spew in English can also mean to vomit. So I thought this would be a new word for everyone. After I ate the bad food, I spewed for hours. Spewed. It's a funny word, but I thought that might be new for everyone. So sweat is one of those words in English that can be used as a noun. It can be a thing or it can be a verb. It can be something you do. So if you are really hot, you might start to sweat. And again, sweat, just like boiling, it's little bubbles that appear on your skin when you're hot. How about this? I will use sweat as a verb and a noun in these two sentences. It is so hot that I'm sweating. Sweat is pouring from my forehead. Forehead. We went over forehead a couple of weeks ago. My forehead is covered by this beanie right now. My forehead keeps growing every day. My forehead keeps getting bigger. Unfortunately, I have less and less hair every day. I don't use the past tense of sweat very often. It sounds strange to me, but I do have a sentence with the verb sweat in the past tense. I sweated. It just sounds funny to me. I sweated throughout the entire class. The room was like an oven. Have you ever been on a beach and maybe you forgot to wear your sandals? Well, the bottom of your feet might get burnt. Be careful on that beach sand. Here's a sentence for you. 
beach sand can burn the bottom of your feet on a hot summer day. You know what? I think this would be a really good picture to show just a little bit bigger for all of the people who might be living in the winter right now. I wish I was at the beach. Just a couple more. Singe. Singe. That might be a new one. Singe. Let's get a sentence for you. Singe means to burn something just a little bit. You might send your clothing if you get too close to the fire. Now, that person is holding a sparkler in their hand. That's what we call it in the picture, a sparkler. I couldn't find a great picture for singe, so I picked this. That person might singe their hair if that sparkler gets too close. Singe, you just... You just burn it a little bit. It's not fully burnt, it's just a little bit. Sometimes in the summer, you need to be careful. These are your eyebrows. These are your eyebrows. And some people I know have singed their eyebrows when starting a grill in the summer. The grill can kind of explode and burn the hair on your face. You might say singed for that. You know what else can burn your hair? Hair dryer. If you leave the hair dryer too close to your hair for a long period of time, you might singe your hair. Singe. Here's a sentence for you. You might singe your hair if you get too close to the hair dryer. Yeah. You need to wave that thing back and forth so you don't singe your hair. Is that a new verb for you? Singe? Singe? The next one is balmy. I'll pronounce that again. The next one is balmy. Balmy. That L is barely pronounced. Balmy. I don't even know if I pronounce the L. Balmy, balmy, balmy is another term you can use when the weather is hot. I'm pretty sure it's getting balmy in Argentina and Brazil this time of year, but this isn't even the same thing. We have balm in English. You can put on balm when your lips or skin are dry and need moisture. So in that picture, if you use it on your lips, you can call it call it lip balm, roasting. So that is a way you can cook things. You can roast marshmallows on an open fire. You can roast meat in the oven. Roast is another way to say hot thing. Congratulations, you made it to the end of a rather long English lesson. If you're not done learning English yet, up there is an English lesson all about driving. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.